Hello everyone, this is General Hand Grenade. Welcome to my war room in Prince George, British Columbia. We are continuing on our mission on how to learn Global War 1936 to 1945, and now we've gotten down to playing the game. In the last video, we learned how to set the game up, um, to, to get all the people together that you need and, and what you're gonna need uh, to set up and what you're gonna need to discuss ahead of time. So now what we're gonna do is the turn order. Um, now the turn order refers to a couple of different things. First of all, it's uh, who goes first and second and third. So let's just take a look up here. Uh, so there's the turn order there, Germany, then Russia, then Japan, then the Commonwealth countries, there's three, or territories, there's three of them. That's uh, the UK, the Far East Command and Anzac, then France goes, then Italy, and then America and China go. Uh, with the, the Russians is also the Communist Chinese, uh, but also uh, Germany and Russia will be playing the, the Spanish Civil War as well, right? So that's, uh, that's uh, who goes first and second, uh, what the turn order refers to. The other thing is, is the turn phases, and that's really what we're going to be looking at here. So this is rank carcasses, uh, document that he created here and he's created a few of them but I put this one on the wall because I thought this one would be particularly helpful so this is what we're going to be looking at is the the turn phases there's production combat movement uh, combat non-combat movement and then the place units and collect income phase and I'm gonna have different videos for all of these in fact there there's gonna be more than just five videos like today I'm doing production uh, that's the first phase, and um, I think that research and technology, and perhaps even Lynn Lease, should have its own video uh, because uh, they're kind of separate things, even though they're they're all done in the in in this phase. So we're doing the production phase today. So what happens in the production phase? Let, let's just take it over here. Um, what I'm going to do, like I needed to pick somebody, and I thought I'd just pick Japan because Japan has a, uh, a, a diversity of what they, they purchase, right? Um, Germany, they're probably just purchasing dudes and, you know, and, uh, and so on and so forth. So production. So this is where you spend your IPPs to purchase military units and built facilities during the production phase of your term, which is right now, right? Um, there's uh, special units as well uh, that, uh, and there's units on the production chart. That's this chart over here. So uh, you can be paying for units on there. You can place units on there to begin with, like you can start their path along the production chart over there. And we're gonna do that here. Um, and you can uh, pay for them. And um, and uh, you place them on the map when when uh, at the end of your turn on the place units phase. But right now you're, you're purchasing units and you're also repairing units. Like, uh, let me just grab a couple of damage chips here first. So, I use the orange and black ones. And uh, the black ones I use as ones, and the orange ones I use as fives, right? So, uh, what you would do, like say, I mean, this is the start of the game, so there's not going to be any damage. But what I've done is I've grabbed three black ones and an orange one here. So that would be eight, right? So what you would do, say if, if this factory was damaged over here, you would put the, the chips underneath the factory. Now to, and, and it could be your uh, shipyard is damaged, or it could be a naval base, or it could be an air base, could be a major factory, could be a minor factory. Uh, any, of the, any of those types of facilities can be damaged. Um, coastal artillery can't be damaged and bunkers can't be damaged, but everything else can be damaged, right? Uh, including your sub bases. Uh, Japan doesn't have any sub bases here. So any of those things can be damaged and you can choose to pay off the damage if you want. Uh, it's up to you. You could say, you know what? I really need to buy dudes this turn, you know, like there's something coming and a, uh, an attack coming and I need dudes, so I'm not going to pay off my damage. But that means that you're not going to be able to use this factory this time. Like this factory here, you can put a, a maximum of five units on. Let's say uh, you decide to pay off the uh, five of it. So you've got three damage left on this factory because you spent five dollars on damage. Well, that means that when you go to your place units phase, 
because you can place five things on and there's a three damage on there, that means that you can um, still place two units because uh, there's a, a capacity of five. Three of them is taken by the damage, so two more can be taken by units, right? Um, when you damage your bases though, like your uh, your your uh, naval base, or your air base, your shipyards, um, any any damage at all in this game, and that renders the base uh, inoperable. Like you can still land an air at an airfield, but um, you're not going to get the plus one uh, as far as like what your movement for your planes and things like that. But we will get more into those kind of things when we do uh, strategic bombing raids. Uh, this is mostly just paying off your damage. That's just kind of a, a little bit of an insight into that. So uh, you can pay your your um, your major factory down below five and still move it up to five. But with your minor factories though, like that's only got a capacity of one. You can only place one unit on. So even just one point of damage is going to render that factory inoperable. So in that case, you would have to pay the damage right off in order to use that thing, uh, that minor factory. So uh, in this case, if we wanted to pay it all off, we would spend eight IPP on this uh, on the production phase uh, right away. We would do that um, to pay off that damage. Um, the other uh, type of damage is uh, damage that you can do to a capital ship. So let me just grab a a capital ship out of the box here. Here, let's just grab a battleship. So let's say that um, this wasn't the first turn <laughs> and you know your ship was out here and it fought a sub and killed the sub but it also took a hit itself. So what happens is that your ship is damaged. Now you could have laid it on its side which is what you know uh, what you would do if you didn't have one of these chips or you could put it underneath a damaged chip. Now what happens is your turn ends right? So then the next turn uh, on your non-combat movement I guess it would be you would uh, you would move this to a shipyard. Uh, so these got these have a, um, a a movement of three. So on your non-combat movement, let's just, let's just move it to this shipyard up here. So when you come to the the first phase, the production uh, phase or repair damage production and repair damage phase. Now um, what you will do is uh, you will decide whether or not to pay this damage off. So, uh, but you, you do have to find out how much damage that is. And that's what, uh, that's one of the differences in this game compared to Axis and Allies. And Axis and Allies, you just remove that because you got it back to a naval base. But here you can't use a naval base. You have to use a shipyard and you have to find out how much damage you have. So what you do is you've got two uh, six-sided dice and you would roll those two six-sided dice and there you go, you've got six damage on there. So in other, in other words, to repair this capital ship here, you would have to spend six IPPs. And if you do that right now, then your ship is good to go. You can use it this turn. Let's say you don't have six or you don't have six that you want to spend on that right now. Let's say that uh, you only have three. Um, you don't have uh, three extra dollars to put on there. So what you would do is you would take that ship off the board and you would put it on back onto your production chart here. Uh, see, like here's the place Unix box, and then you it says you know like you would uh, you would um, place a note uh, as far as how much damage is left. But this is the same thing here. Like remember we had these damage chips, so I'll just put this battleship with three chips underneath it, and there you go. That now I know. Okay, um, at some point I'm. I'm going to have to repair this battleship if I want it back. And I do definitely because it's worth a lot of money. It's worth a lot more than three bucks, right? That's one cheap battleship for me to put on the board at, at three IPP like that. So definitely that's what I'm going to want to do. So that's that's repairing units and repairing um, facilities. Now, as far as uh, production, like uh, actually uh, buying things. So we have uh, these things here. Uh, this is what I put them on, the coasters that you get from historical board gaming, and they work great. Like I like to put, uh, I like to put my money on them because then I know whose money is whose, right? And also, uh, I like to put uh, the things on them that I'm purchasing. So you notice here, Japan has 16 IPP, 
and they're because it's the first turn they don't actually have any damage so I don't need to worry about repairing any damage um, so I'm gonna decide what I want to buy so you look at uh, your card here and this has the costs of everything right like uh, with the dollar sign up here so you can go down and you, so what you do is you're gonna decide okay what do I need you know like uh, what, do, what what are my goals what, what am I trying to do here and for me uh, I don't want to declare a war on, on the Allies yet. Um, I don't want to declare a war on the Russians yet. Um, but I do want to do something, so I think I'm going to go after China. But to go after China, like there's, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can go over land, so like here, these guys here can attack China. But the other thing is, you want to utilize all your boats here because you have these um, battleships and, and cruisers and destroyers that all get bombardment shots, right? So you want to use those. So, uh, but uh, as far as uh, attacking over water like that, you're going to need ground units. And the best ground units to get for that is your, um, your Marines, right? So I'm going to buy a couple of Marines there. So that's, they're four IPP each. And, um, and the other thing I want to do, I, want to also, I also want to attack by land. So I'm going to attack by land in the north up here, you know. Um, and then I'm also going to attack in the south by ship. So I've got the Marines for the south. You know what else I want to do then? I'm going to, um, I'm going to build a facility. Like I'm going to build another factory. Let's build a factory and put them on, um, on Korea here. Now it takes more than one turn to build a factory. Let, let me just show you that there. So let's just move this camera back here. Uh, the, it's the shipping facilities, most of them take more than one, right? So when you look at uh, a minor um, a minor factory here, it says five, five, right? So I gotta pay five, and then the next turn I can pay five. And you see the damage I was talking about? So there's the max damage, it's, uh, it's uh, five. So uh, it can't take more than five damage, any more than that, and it's just five. <laughs> you, know, you can roll a 12 if you want, but it's still only five, right? So anyway, what I need to do um, the, is on my place units phase, like I placed this on here, I shouldn't have placed it on here yet. I'm just showing you, this is what I'm gonna do. And that's why you need one of these markers here, is, uh, uh, is, uh, is to be able to put that on so that you can show where that factor is. It's not enough just to put this on onto the chart, uh, like we are gonna do that, but you see here, this is where minor factory goes. It starts right here. This is where you place your units, right? But everything has a different cost. So five, five means five here, and then five to bring it across, and, I, and then I can pay for it. Um, now, if your factories are all the same color, like a lot of people's, then what you can do is you can just put a chip underneath. But I don't have to because my factories, like I know that that's not an Italian factory, right? I know it's not German. I know it's a, uh, I know it belongs to the Japanese. So I'll just put it there. So let's see, let's, let's count up what we've done here. So that's four and four is eight plus five is 13. So I've got uh, three bucks left. You know, so I'm wondering what should I buy? Well, I can buy infantry for three. Um, but the other thing that I can do is, is take a look at my production chart. And usually that's the first thing I do. I look at my production chart and see what I could do. So this thing here would cost me four to move it over to here. That gets me one step closer to, uh, to placing it on the board, right? But I don't want to do that because I don't have four left. I only got three. Plus I know that if I, uh, when I place this on the board, then the Americans are going to get more money, right? And I don't really need one yet, so why don't I just keep it off the board? Like I can pay it down to here and then just leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. I try to starve the Americans so they don't get much money. But this thing here, I do have three bucks, and coincidentally, it costs three bucks to move a cruiser to the next spot. So there you go. I'm going to move my cruiser down there, um, and, uh, and then next turn, I can pay another $3 and then my cruiser goes on the board. Because when you look at cruiser here, where are we here, da 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 da, cruiser, three, four, four. Oh, sorry, that was wrong. I don't get to do that. I thought it was three. That's only three when you put it on. So that what that means is when, when you buy a cruiser, it's three bucks, and then when you move it along, it's four. So I don't have that much. So you know what I'm gonna do? Instead, I'm, I'm going to,
And you'll have to do this. You'll have to mix and match. I'm going to take one of my uh, Marines off and I'm just going to put a regular dude on because he costs three. And I'm going to move that cruiser along. So there we go. That's 16 bucks right there. And so now I am ready to do the next thing in, in my turn. But uh, that's, uh, that's production. Um, and there's a couple more things that you can do with your money. Um, there's uh, technology rolls, but that doesn't begin until 1939. But we're gonna do a separate video on technology because there's 13 different technologies and I'd like to go through them all. You know, not, not really in depth, but uh, just to tell you what they all are, just so you'll know, okay, you know, that's a good one for this nation or that's not a good one for this nation, you know? Like these guys, for instance, um, rockets isn't gonna do them much good. Rockets only fire two spaces. You know, what good's that gonna do you? If you build a rocket on Japan, you know, I can hit Korea, well, that's great. I already own Korea, you know. But, improved shipyards would be awesome for these guys because you build a lot of ships and that means your ships are gonna cost less, right? So, the different technologies are gonna be good. So, uh, let me just pause this right now and we're gonna come back and talk about the other thing that you can do with your money. Okay, so I was just reading through the, uh, the manual there and there was a couple of things that I forgot to mention, and so I'll mention those now. Now, uh, let's take a, an instance like this. America here has um, it has a, a major factory under construction. So, uh, and this isn't realistic because uh, America, it, it would be hard to bomb it, but I, I needed to use somebody for an example, so I'm gonna use them. So here we have the major factory. Um, it started right here. Like, uh, this is where America bought the major factory, right? And then, so then they paid five bucks and it came here, and then they paid five bucks and it came here. And then Japan comes along and it bombs their major factory, strategic bombs it, right? And uh, all it takes is four points of damage uh, bombing this thing. And what that'll do is that will move this back one. So it'll go back one to there. Uh, and then if uh, uh, the, it managed to get to get bombed again without getting paid down the damage, then it goes to there. Now, if it gets bombed beyond where it started, like if it gets bombed beyond there, then it's off the board. So then this one over here will come off the board. So you can bomb somebody's facilities, and if you bomb them back to beyond where uh, their starting point was, then they come off the board. And the other thing is, another thing that I forgot to mention, is that on your, your uh, chart over here, so let's, let's take Japan for instance, they've got a miner factory here, they've got a cruiser, they've got an aircraft carrier. Now let's say um, somebody comes along and takes out Tokyo. In other words, Japan surrenders. So Japan surrenders to the Americans. What happens is, now the Americans can decide, you know what, let's just get rid of these things. They can throw those things out or they can take over. Like uh, this thing's already been partially paid for. This thing's been partially paid for. This thing's been partially paid for. The Americans can say, yeah, you know what, I'll just keep paying for those. So these things, you would take these off of here, you would replace them with American pieces and you would continue paying for them. Uh, and that's uh, with ships or facilities Anything that's on the production chart over here, uh, if some if uh, you cause somebody to surrender, then you can take those over. Now, it's probably more likely that uh, that will happen with the French, right? Like the Germans will take out the French and then um, they could maybe get the battleship or if uh, they, they didn't completely pay for the cruiser, then there's a cheap way for the Germans to get the, the French cruiser, right? Uh, the things that are on the, on the thing, on the production chart that uh, didn't get completely paid off uh, is open to the nation basically that, that takes it over or causes it to surrender. So there you go. That's uh, that's something else. And I'm just gonna set up the Lend-Lease thing here. Okay, let's talk about Lend-Lease now. Um, now most of what happens during Lend-Lease isn't going to happen in this phase. It's going to happen in the last phase. That's the collect income and place units phase. Uh, but because it begins in this phase, we'll talk about it now. So what happens uh, now is when you decide what you're going to lend lease and who you're going to lend lease it to. So the requirements are though, because you can't just lend lease any amount to anybody, right? Um, 
So uh, they can lend lease to major or minor powers, um, but it has to be under the following conditions though. The receiving nation is at war with a major power or under special con circumstances like say the Spanish Civil War allows that nation to lend lease. Uh, and it may not lend lease to itself or to align minors since they are also technically a part of that nation. Like for instance, Great Britain, the UK there, can't take part of their income or units and lend lease to the Far East Command because the Far East Command is a part of Britain. And that goes to, uh, that, that goes the same for Anzac. And also like if, uh, let's say any, any, uh, any minor country, let's say that uh, Britain has aligned Greece here, then uh, they wouldn't be allowed to send money to Greece because technically Greece is a part of them, right? So you couldn't, um, you couldn't lend lease to something that you already own. Uh, you can only lend lease to somebody else, somebody that's on your side, or it doesn't even have to be on your side. Like you, you could send it to the Russians if you wanted, if you were the allies, right? Okay, so, uh, so you can't do that. Now, at, on this part of the turn, you have to declare what you're going to lend lease. Uh, what you can lend lease is up to half of the nation's current income in IPPs, not in counting bonus income, and you round the fra fractions up. So it can be half of the money that, uh, like we're talking about the Americans here, and we're gonna say that the Americans have 12 bucks. So the Americans in this case would be able to lend lease up to six IPPs to somebody else. And, uh, or it can lend lease a military unit. Such a unit must be produced at a factory in the home nation specifically for the purpose of lending. You may not lend lease units already on the board. Okay, so, you couldn't lend lease this tank here, right? Uh, uh, it, uh, it has to be a unit that you purchase specifically for the purpose of lend leasing to somebody and you have to declare that. So let's say uh, the Americans are gonna lend lease a tank instead, okay? Uh, the Americans are gonna lend lease this tank to Anzac um, and they are allowed to do that because uh, in, our, in our little scenario that I'm making up in my mind as I go, the UK is at war with Germany. And obviously it's not here, this is the opening setup. But let's say the UK is at war with Germany. And if the UK is at war with Germany, then that means that the Far East Command and Anzac are also at war with Germany. Because in the Commonwealth, uh, if, one, if one faction is at war, then they are all at war with the same uh, with the same country and that was true in uh, in history as well like I live in Canada uh, when the UK declared war on Germany that meant that Canada was automatically at war with Germany because we have a duty to protect the crown uh, the Queen of England or could have been the king at the time the we have a duty to, to protect them they are our uh, head of state. The Queen to this day is the head of state in Canada. So uh, anyway, um, because of that, that means that Anzac is at war with Germany. Even though they're not at war with Japan and they're probably not going to have any fights with Germany, they are at war with Germany, or sorry, with Japan. They are at war with Germany and so that means that they're eligible for lend-lease. Now, the, the Americans probably wouldn't take the time to lend them a tank we're going to do it anyway because we've already got a tank out of the box. So uh, now none of that happens on this turn. At, at this point of the turn, all we're going to do is we're going to say America's buying a tank and this tank is going to be lend leased to Anzac. And that's, that, that's all you would do on the production phase. Now, if you, uh, if we, if we skip ahead and you know, like I don't want to leave you hanging. So rather than say, okay, I'll tell you what happens you know, four videos from now. Let's just talk about that now. So when you deliver that, uh, during the collect income and place units phase, the sending nation will attempt to deliver the lend lease to the receiving nation. Lend lease must move along a supply path from a major factory in the sending country's uh, or home country to a land zone in the receiving player's home country. Lend lease units have no combat value during delivery. So this tank that we're gonna send, has to start here at a major factory and has to be purchased specifically for the purpose of lend leasing. It has to start here in, a, in America's home country 
in a major factory and it has to go to Anzac and, and it has to uh, follow a supply path. So what that means is that when, uh, like that tank could have started here, for instance, it could have started here because there's a railway here. Now, uh, if you remember supply path, supply path goes along a railway, an undamaged railway that you own or somebody else is allowing you to use. It goes from there uh, to a port, and here we have uh, a shipyard, and then it has to go down to another naval base or shipyard because supply path is also naval base to naval base or shipyard. Shipyard is the same as a naval base. So here's a naval base down here. Um, they can send that. Uh, now after the route, uh, it has to be the shortest viable route in sea zones to an undamaged naval base where the lend lease will continue towards the receiving nation. Uh, where two routes are equidistant, a player may select either. Begin moving the lend lease along that route. Now equidistant means that there, uh, there's exactly the same number of zones, right? It, it's uh, the same same distance. It's equal distance. So uh, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, there's eight there. I've counted that. Let, let's just move this back so you can see me counting here. Um, so what I did was one, two. Uh, well, we could go here. One two, three, four, five, six. I don't think we can get it any less than six. Uh, we could go um, one, two, three, four, no. So that's the path we would have to take. We would have to go there, to there, oh, no, there, to Hawaii, to there, to there, to there, to there, to there. So we have to take that route because that is the shortest route. Um, the other thing you can do is um, you can go the other direction, like that. that's going through the western United States. You could go through the eastern United States as well, right, as long as you're not going further. Uh, so it could come out of a factory there, and it could go, uh, and, you know, obviously to, not to Anzac, but if you were going lend leasing to something that was somewhere in the middle, then you could try going from there. Because um, what happens is if there's a, a, a sub in the middle, um, then it could try to stop it. But let's say there's not a sub in the middle, and uh, we'll get to that in a minute. So the Americans are going to lend lease that down there. So they bring down this American tank, and they move it along the supply path from the major factory in the western United States. And uh, following the supply path, they move it to this naval base here and then it has to stop as soon as it reaches the home country uh, where the naval base is and this is already at the naval base uh, at the home country now if like say it was coming to you were giving it to china then you go to a naval base like in burma here and then it can go uh, along a railway or the burma road till it gets to china right but it has to be an undamaged railway uh, or uh, the Burma Road has to be open, right? Like it, it couldn't uh, go through here because uh, that uh, the Amer or uh, that's somebody else there. Like uh, they might not you let you use their railway, right? Uh, that's a different country there, uh, and in fact that doesn't even go to China, right? So it has to go through. Like it could go through here and then get and then get on a railway and then stop at Yunnan. But as soon as you hit the uh, the the receiving players home country then it stops and in this case it's going to stop as soon as you get to Sydney here uh, Australia because that's where the the naval base is so it took you six bases to get down there and now these guys got a shiny new tank courtesy of the Americans now um, that's the route so interdiction if the route passes through a sea zone that contains a submarine of a nation at war with the sending nation the lend lease are subject to a convoy rating roll. Uh, IPP losses are taken from lend lease and any amount of damage destroys a military unit. So, uh, if the Americans and 
uh, the Japanese were at war, then the Americans have to be more careful. You know, like if they weren't at war, then the Japanese could have a sub there. That's no problem. That tank would still go through, right through here, because the Americans are not at war with the Japanese. The Japanese don't want to bring them into war. And so they're just going to let that boat with this tank keep going, right? But if they were at war, then, um, uh, then they would try to raid the convoy that the tank is a part of. Or that the money, if they decided to send six IPPs, uh, they would try to raid that. And um, we will get to convoy raiding at some point in the future. Um, it'll be part of the combat phase. Uh, but I don't want to get too far into it right now. But suffice it to say that there are different, uh, different units, uh, uh, like coastal subs uh, are plus one. Regular subs are plus two, and you know, kicked up subs, the advanced subs are plus four, and then you've got your escorts that are also going to get in there. So everybody's going to get to roll a dice basically, right? And if the Japanese uh, with their modifiers come out at three, and the Americans with their modifiers come out at two, then this tank would be destroyed. Uh, or if it was three and two, then the Americans would lose one of the IPPs. And so instead of getting six, then these guys would get five IPPs if you were sending money. Now you definitely would not want to send a tank and you would know at the start of your turn, right? Like you would already have counted that up, uh, before your turn began. Okay. I want to give this to Anzac. Oh, but there's a sub there and I'm at war with these guys. So I don't want to send, uh, I don't want to send a tank or you might say, well, okay, uh, I want to have, well, I guess you don't have a con convoy route there. So yeah, there, it wouldn't do you any good to, uh, to have escorts. What you could do though, is you could come down here, uh, knowing that you wanted to send this to, to Anzac, you could come down here on the, on the combat phase and kick the shit out of this sub, like take them out of the water, you know, <laughs> that's one thing you could do. But it's just, uh, all I'm saying is you gotta be careful. You don't wanna be sending a military unit down uh, through uh, the where um, it could be interdicted by the enemy. So it's gotta be the, the sending nation. So it, it doesn't matter whether or not Anzac is at war with Japan. It matters at war, uh, it matters if the Americans are at war with Japan uh, because that they are the sending nation of that land lease. The other thing is a blockade. Now, a blockade would prevent the delivery of a land lease. Uh, it can't be delivered and must wait until the player's next turn. Uh, in the next turn, you could try again, um, or it could be delayed for another turn. Or you could decide, you know what, this, <laughs> I'm just going to send it somewhere else. Uh, like, you could uh, keep it for the Americans, I guess. So, say the Americans wanted to send something to, like, let's say they wanted to send that tank to the FEC. And the FEC is at war with Japan, and Japan has three surface warships here. Uh, oh, well, I guess it would be, yeah, let's say they wanted to send it through this port here, right? Um, let's say this one was damaged, and the only place they could send it is through this one. Then uh, the, if, if uh, these guys had three surface warships, then you couldn't send it through there. Because that's what it takes to blockade somebody. Uh, uh, it takes three surface warships to do that, right? So you wouldn't be able to send then land lease through this naval port here because the sea zone that that naval port surf, uh, uh, is connected to has three warships of a player that you are at war with um, blockading it from getting through. So that's blockade. And arrival. When money arrives, it is immediately added to the receiving player's IPPs. When military units arrive, they stop moving the moment they reach the first land zone in the home nation of the receiving uh, nation. And that's what I was telling you down here. So as soon as it got to Sydney, you couldn't just keep going along a railway and put it in Western Australia. It has to stop in the first place once it gets to the home country of the receiving nation. So there you go. That is Lend-Lease. Uh, they, they've got a, an example here. Here, I'll just read it to you uh, in case I've <laughs> confused you. 
who is something that I've said. So the USSR needs help from the Allies to resist German advances. The US decides to send one medium armor to the, to the Russians. So that tank that I showed you, they've decided to send it to the Russians. The Danish Straits are closed by German ownership of Denmark, and the convoy line to the port of Murmansk traces through two German submarines. So it's no good for the Americans to try to send lend lease from there up to there because the Germans have them blocked, right? Uh, so what they could do instead, um, they decide to go over to the Pacific and they're going to send it to Vladivostok because there is a, there is a, a naval base right there in Vladivostok. So they decide to, to take the tank from the Western States and they send it to Vladivostok instead, right? Um, but then the tank has to stop there, right? So let's just uh, put this tank up here. So the tank has to stop there and it becomes a Russian tank. And then on the next turn, the Russians can use that railway there to bring it over to the east where they wanted it in the first place. It just takes a little bit longer. So uh, that's what I was talking about when you can decide, okay, I'm going to come from this direction or I'm going to come from this direction. And in that way, you can avoid submarines. Uh, so you're really going to have to work hard if you're going to try to block the Americans from sending uh, lend lease for, uh, to anything, really, because uh, they can go from two different directions that way. And that's about it. That's, that's, that's how it works. So um, that will be the end of this video. Uh, so that was uh, the production phase of this video. So remember, you, you purchase your units. Uh, you repair your damage, you can do lend lease, and also the other thing is, uh, I'll just tell you now, is that you can purchase dice to uh, to roll for um, for technology, and I'm going to make a separate video on that. But I'm just uh, that's the I'm just telling you that's the fourth thing that you could do. You could purchase dice so that you can try to invent weapons, and uh, that that'll be the next video. So, take care everyone. General Hand Grenade out.